hard that's the kick you with dark car. Welcome to Commander Smiths. We are the Commander Smiths. I'm Adam Smith. <laughs> I'm Lowry Smith. <laughs> Don't worry. We're cousins. <laughs> you made yourself laugh that time. Yeah, it was a it was definitely a mixture of the two that I've done on the last. It was like, we are we the are. Command. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh this I is like episode one seventy three. And what are we doing today? Are we still talking salty? We're doing salty thirty two. Woo! We had a bracket and shit went down. It was pretty crazy, actually. I mean, half, a of, of half of the cards lost yes. in our Salty 64. <laughs> yes, they did. As tournaments go. <laughs> yeah. So we're now down to 32. And the 32, we're going to go over all this stuff in a little bit here. Uh, mm -hmm. But the 32, these are going to be tough ones. Like, yes. uh, did you... Okay, so we did... Uh, you made that empty bracket. Did you fill one out? I know you didn't post it or anything, but not, did you kind of do that no. at all? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I had some trouble filling that sucker out, and uh, I'm interested to see where this is going to go. Uh, but that's not all we're doing today. What else are we doing for this podcast? Modern Horizons 2 is out. Yeah, what are all those fingers? <laughs> it is fully <laughs> spoiled, and there are 13-ish new legends that we will go over. So we're doing... Commander 99 or garbage. Muff garbage. Muff garbage. Yeah. There's there's a there's, there's a some that just garbage. aren't going to be good for us. Yeah. They uh, might be good for other things, but not for us. Not for us. Yeah. So we're just doing those two. So again, we're missing out on uh, Stump the Smith Savant. Yeah. So I might as well just get a hello boobies in there, just because we every episode has to have a yeah. Hello, boobies, if I can find well, it. I mean, they don't. Maybe Wizards of the Coast is listening Hello, to boobies. this one and like, oh, ah, we just ruined our shot. <laughs> and they're like, hey, this these is... guys have cleaned up their act from the last three years. And they're not swearing happened. as much. Hello, and boobies. And boobies. And they're <laughs> like, oh, no more preview Boobies cards. isn't a swear no. word. That's like a nice thing. It's like. Yeah, but it's. That's like 18 plus, not 13 plus, like on their <laughs> packaging, 14 <laughs> plus or whatever. That's what they uh, need. Yeah. Remember when that, what was that whole thing uh, that went down? Was that like a year and a half ago or two years ago? Or it was like something about your brand that makes it sound really dirty. And then Wizards did that tweet about uh, 13 oh. plus or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Trombley got kind of wrapped into that remember i don't yeah, remember he was oh, the one that... he he tagged wizards into saying yeah. it because everybody all the other big companies were yeah, and then he... they went off of his <laughs> and did that and then they're he like oh, this guy in minnesota got, got somebody fired <laughs> yeah for sure uh all right so that's the two we're doing we're not doing one spec again um modern horizons 2 is coming here so Are you gonna press uh, a button for one spec scan oh off. yeah might as well we, we got yeah, i mean Gandalf has, we'll do Gandalf. If we're going to do Hello um, Boobies, I want to hear uh, well, Gandalf so talk. Gandalf. In the common tongue, it says one. Spec. That's it. That part. That's just refreshing. <laughs> Spec. Spec. I don't I even know why Gandalf said it like that. Uh, uh, this past oh. week when I was at yeah. the funeral stuff, and I was like, because she's the reason that I got into Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, yeah, it's even brought itself into the podcast because we have Lord of the Rings in there and I played her that stuff. So she was pretty impressed. Cool story, Hansel. Uh, what are you drinking there, Lowry? I'm all done. Uh, uh -oh. Firestone Propagator Series Citra Single Hop high, Hazy IPA Hints of Grapefruit and Citrus and it's uh, it's a solid beer. I like it. It has, it has some bitter to it, but it's not like overpowering. Um, and I think that's part of like the citrus and then the hazy IPA part. I think I like it. Hi, hazy IPAs. Are so. you getting another one or do you need me to take a pause on this podcast so you can go get a beer? No. Uh oh, uh -oh. it's another. <laughs> huzzah. I come prepared. I, come prepared. <laughs> I don't know why all of a sudden huzzah started coming into my vocabulary, but when I was in Florida, I said huzzah a lot. And my aunt's just like, Oh, that's unique. I'm like, <laughs> That's I just started mean. saying it. I don't know why I started saying it. Uh, I'm drinking uh, Lambrusco because this was the last of it, and I'm trying to stay away from my gout toe stuff. You know, the old gout toe. Lam Isn't that just a wine, though? Like a yeah, sweet it's, wine? it's a wine. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. 
I had soccer last night for the first time in two years, and that kicked my ass. Um, yeah. Toe is doing all right. But <laughs> we had three subs. So remember, it's 94 degrees here. Uh, yes. This was 7 o'clock last night. It was Very 94 hot. degrees. Uh, we had three subs. Uh, by halftime, we were down a guy. We lost four oh, people. like cramping? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah, it was awful. And then we even got, like, breaks halfway through the half. So it went by quarters, basically. And by halftime, we were down a guy, and it was we got our asses <laughs> kicked because it's a bunch of old guys yep. against a bunch of twenty-two year olds, and they fucking rocked us. Well, it didn't help because everybody was fucking cramped, and people were playing positions yeah. that they like. Even Trombley is normally our goalie, and one of the guys was like, "I can't even run, so can I take goalie?" And so Trombley <laughs> gets on the field, and he's like. I don't. I've never been on the field in like five, six years. So he, <laughs> he, he got. He was kicking himself because there was one. The ball was coming and he completely like whiffed it, and they just dribbled on by and scored. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "This is why I'm not on the field." But yeah, so the gout toe held up all right. The Good. the thing I'm noticing is now when I do like really big exercise stuff, I can feel it, so it like hurts, but it doesn't hurt like gout. It just like has pain. Like a sore muscle that's, kind of that's thing? Got a, that's probably like scar tissue or like... Yeah. Or the crystal's like, uh, still sitting in there just crystal's like grinding, grinding up. Yeah. yeah, that's probably not good. Yeah. So, but it, yeah. Needless to say, um, Florida was good. It was interesting. Um, went quick, uh, but everything went all right. It didn't kill good. my mom. Didn't kill good. anybody else. Good. We're cutting <laughs> Mom, that, if right? you're listening we, to this, we I'm glad uh, I, didn't, I didn't kill you. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to really talk to her at all. It was just kind of a whirlwind. We were down there. Some days we were just driving all over. And then we leave Florida, which was 85 degrees. And we come back to Minnesota, which is 100 degrees. And I was like, this is what I thought Florida was going to feel like. Yeah. It was 20 degrees hotter here than it was down in Florida. (laughs) I feel like the humidity wasn't that bad here. I like as it has or could be in Minnesota. I I, I think you're right. But I feel like the last couple of days, as it's continued to stay 90, it's that the getting, humidity is starting yeah. to get hot. Like today, I went out and uh, I should get this button ready really quick. Uh, number two's house hasn't closed yet. Where's my hay? Mm-hmm. Number two. Hey, hey, number two. Uh, but as part of a, a, a good real estate agent, I... <laughs> I went and mowed his new house's lawn because they, the people that he's buying from moved out and oh, they didn't, they're gone. yeah. So they didn't have a mower and everything there. So I was like, I'll go mow it. And so I went over there today and it was 80 degrees and I swept my balls off. It was pretty bad. <laughs> but yeah, we're, you we're are still a good real estate house. agent. They're I mean, just, uh, yeah. anybody what? else in Minnesota that's looking to sell their house, call Adam at commandersmiths at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At Commander Smith's. So then Larry gets a portion of it because it's part of the email chain right That's there. It. <laughs> we, we, split, uh, we split everything 60 40 my way. So right. <laughs> I don't know if I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're. We're still closing on the house. Just things got delayed. Good thing the market's kind of crazy. You know, his s- s- crap happened. Crazy. It was buyers crazy. were crazy but yeah market's insane you're about to experience that in the next month or so or whatever but yeah it's insane. we're leaving town <laughs> you're getting the hell out of here mm-hmm. uh all right so i don't think has anything happened once since i was gone because it feels weird because i haven't we recorded early it's been so a while. it feels since it's only been a week and a half it feels longer though yeah, but uh, anything happened last week and a half? You, uh, my you shaved dad your turned, goddamn yeah, beard. That's true. Yeah. If you guys go on YouTube, Lowry looks like a baby. He looks like here. I got the picture here. I look like a hairy baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lowry's wedding. Uh, let me back it up. This is Lowry's wedding day. That was uh, how that long was ago was that? Almost five years. Yeah, five years he, at the end of July. Let's see if I can get the yeah focus phone. So very oh. very similar. Um but 50 pounds extra around the body and uh <laughs> and you're wearing a robe and i'm wearing a robe that's <laughs> I, but you know that that says been roughly to... five years married right <laughs> right that's... you're in a you're a robe guy <laughs> speaking of the robe <laughs> so i i um i told our i showed a video i think i was showing a short of to you know showing that to family you know yeah. 
And Cindy was looking at watching the short, and she's like, why the fuck is he wearing a robe? <laughs> she's like, that, that robe just looks so tattered and worn. I was like, that's the bit. That's <laughs> the like, bit. There is even an episode where we were recording, and then I was like, where is your robe? And you're like, oh, fuck shit. And he like grabbed your robe and put it on. Like, that's the bit. She's like, I, I knew it, it was a good, good bit <laughs> before we even started the podcast or doing YouTube or anything, because I was wearing this. I, I wear this at night. I got this from my dad. Like, it's Arizona, like patterns, but not the color. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, you know, we were watching TV, me and my wife, and randomly her mother stopped by and I answered the door and she was, I think she was just dropping off like flowers or whatever some type of plants and i saw her sh- she went like <laughs> she was like shocked at <gasps> the robe <laughs> like it's just going that is one ugly robe and i went i'm gonna keep this yes yeah. <laughs> well the best part is if you're watching on youtube you can see lowry's dress shirt that he has on <laughs> underneath it right now because <laughs> he was at his God. dad's birthday his dad's 70th birthday yep. tonight and so yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have this nice robe over the top of it. It's perfect. Uh, all right. Um, I think that's enough BS. And Indeed. I think we can get right to it since we have a lot of stuff to do here. So uh, do I have my right opener thing? Okay. So tags, you can become a patron if you donate a dollar or more. Uh, that gets you into the discord, gets you into battle box league, uh, just gets you to bullshit with all of us on there. Also help us finish some tiebreaker votes, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yes. The discord helped out on two of the votings Two, two of the votings this week, $5 or more gets you the proxy of the week. Uh, each month we send the proxy of the week uh, for the last two months and you get to choose from that. And we send you those. And if you're a hundred dollars or more, you get to choose from any of the months for each month. When we get to mm-hmm. that, uh, then you can also support the show. The free way to do it is jump on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Check out our videos like curated MTG, which was today. Today's was uh, Pia's revolution. Yeah. Which is an, a red enchantment that uh, is like Athreos got a passage uh, but for artifacts, and so if you have an artifact going to your graveyard, it goes back into your hand unless you choose target opponent and they can have three damage dealt to them to put it into your graveyard. So, so it's a good way to potentially sack your stuff and it, they can take three damage or you're getting it right back again. And most of the time, unless it's later in the game, they're going to take the three damage to make sure it goes yep. to the graveyard. But then you do some shenanigans where you can bring it back from the graveyard and all that fun stuff too. So yeah, it's it seems like it's gonna be really cool on my Oscar deck, Oscar the Reconstructor, mm-hmm. the new one, red white. That would be so, perfect in there. Yeah, because yeah. doesn't that make the tokens or something if it's in the graveyard? Yep. So, so you're like, you can have this go back to my hand, or you can go to the graveyard and, I'll make and then I can make of tokens them. of it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, that seems like it'd be a lot of fun to use in that. Uh, you can also see proxy of the week, which I did not do last week because I was out of town. This week will be the vampiric tutor finish off the X-Men tutor or cards who, that we did. What what that we know what that's going to be, right? What is it oh. going to be? Mr. Sinister. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Sinister. That's going to yeah, be yeah, awesome. Yeah. I, I got two arts. I'm going to use on that. And then because I missed this last week, I will be posting the digital images of you all of those. You don't have to do that. Yeah. You don't, know, post- you don't owe anybody anything. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I feel like I want to, I wanted to put those out there. So I'm going to put the digital images. You got to check that out on Twitter. So make sure to jump on Twitter. Uh, also, you post that to Discord though too, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I've been doing that with Discord. So that's kind of a perk for being on the Discord. Yeah. You guys can get the di- digital images. It's a little different than seeing the post actually from Twitter. Uh, but I will post out the uh, digital images on Twitter. And also on Twitter is where you can see the Salty 64. So we have the Salty 64 on there. You can vote for all those cards. Uh, there's also a way to win the top two prizes, which we'll talk about in a second here uh, on there. But you also see... Uh, mail day card sphere um, not sharing what, with adam not sharing with adam what you did tonight a uh, light beer what was that miller Mick Highlight? golden light Mick golden light that's what it was it's the best stuff <laughs> so good and then did we post anything else on there there's a couple other fun stuff but uh, most of the stuff no. we 
it goes right to our Discord, and then it's like, all right, filter over to the Twitter. But yeah. the big thing right now, and at least for the next month and a half or so, is the Salty 64, Voting. which will be on there. Vote, vote, vote. So get one, out there this, and vote. Can this get your week sticker. be Thirsty 32? Because oh, last week was was salty, salty. and you thirsty the week after, the right? 30. <laughs> and does that... Does that work? Doesn't it still have to be salty though? Or now we're at the salty. It could be. I mean, they're still salty. Thirsty sounds like they're like they want to fuck. We were we were supposed we were supposed to come up with something for thirty two. I was like, we got a week and a half to figure it out. (laughs) We didn't even try until (laughs) right now. We just remembered. Let's start working on this right now. (laughs) Maybe we should just do tags. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so you can also direct messages there uh, on Twitter, or you can shoot us an email at commandersmiths at gmail.com. So that is it. That is everything. Mm. Now it is time to get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. We bring you the saltiest cards in Commander with the <laughs> Salty 64. Let's get ready to rumble! Get your salty. 64. Salty. 64. Salty. 64. Salty. Shit, that's good. Y'all ready for this? The oh. longest intro ever. <laughs> I was surprised we did not get flagged on YouTube for uh, stealing a bunch of that stuff. But well, hey, our lawyer did like <laughs> warn us about it too. Our lawyer, yeah. our yes. lawyer, lawyer number two. Uh, <laughs> hey, number two. <laughs> hey, number two. All right. So what we are going to do today is we're not going to go through all sixty-four teams again, but we are going to go through what happened yes. this past week. And what the results were and what the new matchups are. So uh, just a reminder, the way to vote for this, well, one, hashtag MTG Salty 64. So here's the giveaway part. So if you're if you did this last week, you get to do it again this week. And if your team is still or your card is still alive, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody that voted voted for cards that are that won yeah, pretty yep. handily this week. But what you can do is go on uh, on Twitter after we tweet it out with the uh, hashtag MTG Salty 64, and then you put what card you want to win, what you think is going to win uh, the entire thing. At the end, we are going to take whatever the winner was, tally up how many votes it got from everybody. So if you got the right card from the beginning. You're getting, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven votes, I think is what the total comes to. Seven six, votes if you six, got the right six, card. Six. six. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. But then the seven, right? One, <laughs> One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six. 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 But then would it be ends the up being seven. Oh, yeah, because you wouldn't vote for it or <clears throat> one. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I vote for this one. Well, that's the only one you can choose. Uh, You're stupid. a winner, Harry. <laughs> You're a- nice. That was good. Uh, so you'll get, if you had the right team from the beginning, for example, you'd have six votes. Well, let's say your team gets knocked out. I keep saying team, but it's it's really your. <laughs> well, you got a very thematic team music at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's say your, your, your card gets knocked out after the third week. Well, that doesn't mean you're out of it. Then you can pick a new card. You still have a chance yeah. to win. Even yeah. if it's the very last week and you choose the right winner, um, you still have a, an entry. So then at the end, we will do a drawing and the winner will get winter orb and expropriate. Or is it static orb? Static orb. Static orb. Static orb. I wrote winter. Why did I do that? Static orb. Because winter orb t- killed. <laughs> it did. Uh, not as good as uh, Hull Breacher. That was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. But, it's, yep. but we'll get to that. Uh, okay. So you will win both expropriate and static orb. So hashtag MTG Salty 64. Now, if you want to vote, the way to vote for this, we're going to make it a little easier this week hashtag vote salty 32. So that's just, if you're wanting to find how to vote for these, just go on Twitter, hashtag salty 32 vote salty 32. Okay. That's easy. And really Um, like you can just go under 
Commander Smith's go to our tweets slide down because this, yeah. this is what we're doing for the week. You you might see my curated, but that's uh you'll you'll find the this rounds voting pretty quick exactly. if you just go under our tweet yeah. section. The other thing you can do, if you don't have Twitter and you don't want to get Twitter, just make a burner account. Or you can make multiple accounts if you want. Yeah. I'm giving ideas yep. for people here. You can do like uh, Seth from uh, Discord did and make Commander Seths. Makes sense on to Twitter. me. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Yep. You can just just make up an, a, a name that whatever. Be unique with it or whatever. But then you get yeah. to vote. Like I mean, don't yeah. don't make up a second Commander Gouts though. Like that's yeah. <laughs> Do something. Which, do something else. Which I, I have to also make mention. There was another one that started, which is uh, CMD two dime underscore nickel. Yeah. <laughs> that one, that one, I I want. Hey, I host a podcast. Check it out. That's pretty fantastic. So I, I don't even know who that one is. I knew no. Seth's, but I want to know who that one is. So you <clears throat> be unique with it. If you don't want to have a Twitter account, that's totally fine. But then it gets you a chance to vote yeah. and potentially win. Even if you don't want to win something, it at least gets you a, a chance to vote. So that being said, why don't we jump into the results of everything? So we're going to start off on the Lowry bracket. Yes. And we're just going to go through it. So, Larry, why don't you just start off with the first one? How did everything go with that? All right. So, the my first, number my number one two, seed two. was a uh, Static Orb going against Mind Crank. And obviously, Static Orb won that at 96%. <laughs> Holy balls. Uh, yeah, that was that was a big, big time beating. Uh, and then the second one was, uh, I'm not sure what seed it was, but Jin Cataxius was uh, the higher seed actually upset by yeah. Gaddock Teague by quite a bit by 72%. And, yeah. and I remember having Gaddock Teague. That was one of them that I was like, I don't think, I don't think this fits like, and I kept on pushing it down and it made it into the second round and I clearly was wrong. Yeah. Um, there was like, I think we had five upsets maybe. And this was one of them that yeah. kind of surprised me and it made it here. And so right but it's now that, we it's have that taxing yeah. part. We're making it yeah. people not able to do. I think that's part of the reason why that one yeah. easily beat Jin, Jin and on that one. Jin Cataxius is like so expensive. So it might just not come down nearly as much as a commander of two mana. Right. Two. <laughs> yeah. So, two. Um, so right now we have static orb against Gaddock Teague. And I static orb. I think static orb still takes this, but it might be, it's going to be closer than 96%. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I overplayed the static orb part. I, I don't know, dude. I don't know. A lot of people, the brackets I saw from people and I think my bracket included had your static orb making it to the finals. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So your orb was up there. So uh, we'll see. There's some, this one's going to be, uh, I think, this round for Static Orb, and we'll get to the next one like in a second. 60, but th this one's tougher than the next round. If it makes it past this round, it's going to beat the, the next one because yeah. we'll, let's go over the next. Yeah, so yeah. then your next bracket, you went Cathar's Crusade, your, your little guy there, uh, went against Orloro, and it didn't get crushed but it got beat your yeah. cathar is so this is another upset got 57% of the votes was a loro so i'm Laurel pretty upset beat. about that yeah but a much closer match was wandering our cake there was times when wandering our cake was ahead uh was yeah. up against uh derevi and derevi won 53% so that was a pretty close one right That's there very but close. I, God, that was so Minnesotan right there. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. that was a pretty <laughs> close one right Such there. Such a good game. <laughs> but, yeah, I was uh, I was surprised. I thought Wandering Archaic was going to make it all that round. Um, I think I eight. think if we do this, if we would do this bracket next year, Wandering Archaic wins this match. It's only yeah, been out for, like, some time to breathe. It's yeah. only been out for, like, six weeks at this point. Right. Like, yeah, I, I bet you're right. And Derev is a hated stacks commander. And so. I voted for Wander. I voted in this. I was like, Wander and Archaic, because I played it like multiple times and it sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, with this matchup, though, Aloro and Derevi, where do you think things lie on that? These I have are, mine. These are two old commanders actually from the same, same set that came out. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think this goes to Derevi pretty yeah, soundly. Just, again, stacks, fuck, it sucks. Yeah. Like, Aloro's annoying because you can't really do anything about it, but 
The Ravi sucks. Yep, yep, yep. The Laurel is just gaining life. You know, yeah. the you deck's just can't typically do about it. You know, yeah, it, it's life. It, it's you'll figure out a way to deal with it later. It's not really that salty of a card out. You know, it. it, it <laughs> I don't think a Laurel, it was a tough one to even have in here for me because yeah. I, I, I have an Aloro deck, but it isn't that salty of a deck. It's an enchantment. And I, kind of I deck. hate it because I kind of chose a Loro to ho- be a soft spot to get Cathar's Crusade into the second round. <laughs> and, it, and then it's still lost. Uh, yeah. I'm probably, that's probably the most saltiest thing about this bracket for me. <laughs> you tried to get both Cathar's of my card. high picks lost. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. What is our next matchup of your bracket here? <laughs> so, so okay, really quick. That's where I was saying whoever wins here, Aloro and Derevi, is going to easily get blown out by Static Orb. Or if I, Teague I makes it on, that. whatever I winner, that. I believe, is just going to blow this one out. Oh, so. I can see, like, Derevi and Teague being a good match, but Static Orb is just going to crush. Yeah. All right. So what is the next one that- results here next uh top seed would be send triplets uh and that was against magister sphinx and send triplets wins that matchup by 81 percent killed <laughs> people don't as uh bill from woodbury said people don't like their grubby like their opponent's grubby yeah, hands on their, on their cards, cards. Yeah. and i totally agree yeah. uh but the the most Closest. closest battle we had was one that ended at 50%. What was that? Uh, it was Thieves Auction and Soren Markov. Man, this sucker went back and forth. Like yep. one was like one vote ahead and then the other one, then it was tied. And then it went one vote ahead the other way. And then it was tied. And then I texted you, what was it? La- I think last night you like gave it to one. Yep. And I was like, dude. The other one's winning now. You're like, what? I just fucking checked it. And so uh, we ended up 50-50. So we put it up to the Discord yep. uh, to vote today. And that ended up, what was it? Um, I believe that ended up 11 to 7. So it was still pretty close, but 11 went in favor of which one? Soren Markov. Yep. So Soren moves on to the next round. And so that one's the one that Out. makes your life total 10. And I will say... Soren was my pick only because I've faced it so many times. And I feel yeah. like half of those times you have it and half of those times Maybe. or more, I am your target. <laughs> and so, and yeah, even when it's right. not you, I feel that like it's right. Adam gets Soren. And, and I always, am just like, yep, I know it's coming. Like, I'm just like already prepared, turning my dice to 10. All right, going to 10. <laughs> but I still, so this round is going to be send triplets versus Soren Markov. Ooh. I think that's going to be a good match, much yeah. closer than I. Like, I would personally vote Soren. Really, I I think Sen Triplins. You know, Triplins is would... going to take this. Yes, at sixty, but I would at like vote sixty Soren. forty seventy thirty. But I can agree with that. But I have faced Soren so many times and been on the butt end of that. And I have a trip triplets deck, or I had a triplets deck. <laughs> yeah, so you did. I don't mind it that like, much. That's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, but I agree with you. I think triplets will probably make it out of this yeah. round, but yeah, Soren so. would be what my vote is. All right. So then the next part of this bracket is you had Tigrid going against Mesmeric Orb. You had your orbs, your collection. Yeah, of my orbs. collection of orbs. And T-Grid comes out in front at 73%. So that's pretty, yeah. that was a pretty big butt whoop in there. Yeah, the random mill cards that the Mind Crank and uh, Mesmeric Orb went up against hard mm-hmm. targets, but they did not fare well either yeah. way. Now, this one was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. But <laughs> Ristic too. Study yeah. went against Hushbringer. And I do remember at one point Hushbringer was in the lead. It was, it was early on. It was. Uh, but Ristic ends up pulling out the win with 67%. That was much closer than I thought it was. I thought Ristic was going to run away with it. But Hushbringer shutting down, isn't it uh, ETB effects as well? And Hushbringer? Death Triggers. And Death so it Triggers. Does, oh, it, yeah. So, it kills both. And so I, I didn't expect Hushbringer... I don't think I have it in any decks. No, I, I mean, I should it. probably. But... I mean, we spec'd on it. I at least yeah. spec'd on full arts of this because I think it's a really good card. I just haven't played it. Mm-hmm. I haven't played white, and I haven't seen it be played yeah. either. So. I mean, for somebody that only plays mono red, like, yeah. <laughs> so, but Aristic Study is, like, holistically, like, annoying card. Right. Right? Just, you're going to pay the one? 
You're going to pay the one? Yeah. Are you going to so, pay the one? With but somebody's getting grade. a rash just hearing me say that, I'm right. sure, <laughs> as they're listening. <laughs> so <you> down here. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Pay one. Gross. Uh, so with the T-Grid and Ristic match, though. That's uh, going to be a good one. I think so, too, but I, I'm probably leaning Ristic on this one. I agree. Right. Just because it's been around longer. Again, T-Grid's only been around for three, four months at this point. Yeah, well, yeah, is it only that much? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of pent-up emotion with Ristic study, in my opinion. Yeah. Yep. So so that'll be close. All right. Then we move to the bottom part of your bracket. What is the next matchup we have here? This one was closer than I anticipated as well. Jockle yeah. Hops, which <laughs> destroys <laughs> literally everything on the board, versus mm-hmm. Mana Web, which has opponents keep, like, if they tap a land, they got to tap all their land. Jockle Hops won that by 63%. This was That's my. Close. This is my second. Yeah, this is my this second is your number two pick. Yeah. 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 And it won by 63%. I am floored. <laughs> and uh, and then the next matchup was Triumph of the Hordes versus Constant Going against one of Myths. your picks. <laughs> one of your yeah, I guess, I guess I could see that one losing. But uh, Constant <laughs> yeah, Myths is my saltiness. And it got trounced by Triumph of the Hordes by 83%. Yeah, um, that's your and so third this third <laughs> highest uh, trouncing in your whole bra- on yeah, your bracket. One, yeah. two, you have the third highest trouncing. And so, this the second round is going to be Jockle Hops versus Triumph of the Hordes. That's going Ooh. to be close. What right? would your vote be? Because we haven't seen Jockle Hops played. Yeah. So personally, Jockle Hops wouldn't even be a factor of mine because it's like I haven't seen it, but I try to put myself in the situation i've seen triumph because i'm the one playing it. i think this so. is just really close i think with triumph being a a well-known and consistently used game ender game winner, or at least yeah. like person killer but what, what makes it more salty that you just lost by poison well that would be you yeah or jocko hops expanding the game because you just destroyed everything and everybody's starting from that, zero that basically. to me would make me more salty just going like so okay too. you just added an hour onto the game you have no plan to like if somebody went Boros Charm, make all of my stuff indestructible, then Jockle Hops, then I'd be like, cool, good game. You would just won, yeah. good job. But if like, but if they just expanded the game, for sure Jackal Hops, I'd yeah. be like, fuck that card. Speaking like doing it that way, I probably would do Jockle Hops, I guess. But I think Triumph is going to win just Triumph. because of how prevalent is it is in the game. How many times is a game winner? How many times do you lose to Triumph? How many times enough. have you lost to Triumph? Enough times. <laughs> enough. All right. The next matchup is <clears throat> Aura Shards going against Oko. I am surprised by this. Actually, it's really close because there was a point that Oko was ahead, but Aura Shards ended up winning 62% yeah. of the votes. Yeah. And that is going to be going against, we had Mind Slaver going against Agent of Treachery. So yeah. kind of similar-ish is dealing with what? Mind Slaver's taking the turn. Agent of Treachery's taking Permanence. stuff. So, but Mind Slaver kind of kicked ass and yeah. won 80% yeah. of the votes there. So we have Aura Shards going against Mind Slaver. I feel like this one's almost a no-brainer for me, but. What are you? What are you... I'm thinking Mind Slaver's yeah. going to win this one. Yeah, I think Mind Slaver gonna... destroys this one too. It's that grubby hand part. Right. Like, don't, <laughs> don't, not only are you touching my cards, but you are like doing everything I don't want you to do. Yeah. Taking my turn, you <sighs> bastard. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, uh, that seems pretty terrible. I so I, like I think that one will be a runaway with Mind Slaver on that. Uh, all right. The next uh, matchup we got going. All right. Grand Arbiter. The, 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 I'm starting to yeah. feel a little bit. I'll, uh, <laughs> you don't need to do the whole name of it. Just Grand, Grand Arbiter. Grand Arbiter uh, was going up against Notion Thief, and Grand Arbiter won by 77%. I would have expected that. Um, See, I went the other way. I think I even voted for Notion Thief did on you this really? one. Really? Yeah, because, I mean, I, I said it in the cast the last yeah, time. Grand Arbiter, every time it's been played against me, it's either I had Rashmi, which it didn't really affect me much because everything's low-costing, or I've been playing uh, Eureka, so it's like I don't even care because <laughs> I'm, I'm not just casting anything. Nin- I'm just I'm ninjutsuing yeah. everything in, so whatever. Uh, but I understand. I understand why it won. Yeah. Uh, but what did it? What is it going against? And then the next uh, section was Emrakul, 
Uh, the new one that's not banned, clearly, against Bribery, which goes in and steals a card from a, an opponent. And Emrakul won this by 68%. And I was surprised about that one, too, actually. I, I thought I Bribery. as well. Because that's going through their deck and taking a card and putting it into play. Like, I think Bribery is so old school that yeah, it might people just don't not know about be. It as much. I, yeah, I just don't think it's used enough. And I think that's... Did you say used a muff? Used a muff. Muff garbage. <laughs> muff Get on. Gar- I, I just I, I think there are some of these cards that are already kind of like rule zeroed out where people are like, that's too mean. I don't want to do that. And so you don't mm. see it as much, so you don't hate it as much. Yeah. And so I do think some of these cards are are going to be hurt from that. And I think bribery is one of those cards Got that just of, lost yep. out. Although Evercool is an if awful card If they reprinted to play that in like a um, a newer set, I bet you it would, it would probably change and be a little bit higher on the list. Yeah. You know, probably put up a bigger fight. Yep. Uh, oh, who do you think is going to win out of Emrakul and Grand Arbiter then? Uh, I think that's a really close one. I don't know. These are th- this second round matchups are insane. Like this is going to be really tough. Uh, I think I'm probably leaning Grand Arbiter because of the tax stuff and having your stuff cost less. I think people the get only problem super is- salty about Emrakul, though, because you also have the standard implications with that where people, like, it was so good, it got banned and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's only. And it can go in any deck years. pretty much because yeah. it's colorless. Yeah. So there's that. So um, I, I think I think Emrakul has a real chance. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Excuse me. It's going to be a really good one. Uh, all right. Then we move into your last matchup of your bracket. Uh, the. Second biggest butt whooping was from Winter Orb yeah. against Scrambleverse. Uh, that won 92% of the vote. Scrambleverse did. Just kidding. Winter Orb did. Uh, <laughs> and then our second matchup was Torment of Hailfire going against Food Chain. This one was pretty damn close, that but was. Hailfire, Torment of Hailfire came out at 59%. Uh, it's so, pretty obvious who's going to win this Yeah, one, Winter Orb versus Winter Torment Orb. of Hailfire. Winter Horb. Winter Horb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be at the level you're at. I might have to go get a oh, some whiskey before we get into oh, the... Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me, let me start uh, the top bracket here. So yeah. then we'll jump over to my side. So this is my side of the bracket. My number one was Expropriate going against Collector Oaf. This one was a little closer. It was Way not closer than like I thought. It. Yeah, but it, yours was a 96% win. Your number one, 96%. Yeah. My number one, one, 72%. You, I think because of the the turning off artifacts, everybody plays mono rocks. Yeah. The people got, that's. But the, I think the, you also, I think, I think the, you reached on expropriate. I think that shows, and you're just I like, did. I want an expensive card to give away. Exactly. Because the, <laughs> there's obvious ones later there. It's like, fuck, those probably yeah. should have been my number one. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> expropriate, uh, it won 72%. That's still a good number, but it's not for a number one choice going yeah. against the, the last choice. Um, <laughs> whoops. Uh <laughs> So then uh, Gaia's Cradle went against, against uh, Back to Basics. So Gaia's Cradle was my no, or the higher seed, not by a lot, but it was the higher seed. Mm-hmm. Uh, ended up losing to Back to Basics, which is kind of understandable, but lost 68% or 68% Back to Basics. It wasn't, won. Yeah, not very close. Not close, but that makes sense. I mean, Back to Basics is tapping your lands out. and yeah. Now, okay, so the more important thing is, how is this one going to go? Back to base against expropriate? expropriate. That one's a really close matchup. It's a very close matchup. Yeah. I, I don't, and I'm taking out my bias of that's my number one. Uh, Cause I don't personally in my bracket, I didn't have expropriate making it even to the finals. So, <laughs> uh, I almost might go back to basics I, with that. I, I think, think that has a real good chance. I think this is going to be like mm-hmm. 50, like in the fifties, yeah, 50s. it's gonna be really. Close. It's funny you look at the top that your number one and my number one. That these matchups are good. Yep, like Teague against Static Orb. I think obviously Orb is gonna win. I think that has a but better it's chance closer than, than Expropriate I th- against. Yeah, it's gonna be closer. Right. But then, back to basics and Expropriate are are really close and equal. I I think it's gonna be really close for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, what is the next matchup that was on this side? Next one was Opposition Agent versus Tefiri's 
protection. And I think a lot of people were like, Teferi's protection doesn't even make me salty. And yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and they would have been right if they said that. Uh, opposition yeah. agent <laughs> got one at 88%. Um, and then the next one would be Blood Moon versus Golos, the Tireless Pilgrim. And that was also a crushing by the top seed there <laughs> with Blood Moon winning at 83%. Yikes. Yeah. But those, this well, next matchup, holy crap. Uh, Opposition, Opposition agent, against Blood Moon? Blood Moon. I what don't the fuck know. Do you vote for? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I play mono red, so I love Blood Moon, but I know how much Blood Moon is hated. And it's when been I around it or when I've had a, It crushes mm-hmm. in modern. Like, there's a lot of, you know, but pent up sexual agent. frustration with Blood Moon. <laughs> yeah. But when, it's that time of month and we can't do it. <laughs> but. <laughs> gross. But. I, <laughs> With opposition I know agent, what the opener is going to be. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> opposition agent, people just talk about it with disdain. They're just yeah, like that fucking card. And it's only been out for six, no, eight months or no, whatever. No, it since came December. out in December. Yeah, so we're at six months right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not out that long. Uh, I. I think Blood Moon might get it, but again, this is going to be like the expropriate bracket. It's going to be really close. They're going to be close. Really close. I, All right, the I, next one. I think one. Opposition Agent. Well, you think op- yeah, Okay. I think so. Did I, what did I say? Did I say you Blood, said Blood Moon? Moon. Yeah, Blood Moon. So, Blood Moon. <laughs> <laughs> you had beers on the boat too, I did. didn't you? I did. <laughs> nice. uh, all right, so then the next matchup was Cyclonic Rift against Stranglehold. Cyclonic Rift whooped up on Stranglehold. Oh, shit. More than one person voted for Stranglehold. What? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was a mic- misclick on Stranglehold, but. <laughs> the person that voted that uh, uh, chimed in, in to get Stranglehold on the list, yeah. you know. that's the, uh, So 85% for Cyclonic Rift. Oh, yep. Yeah, so it kind of whooped up there. And then we had Sliver Hive Lord going against Dranith. Um,. Uh. Dranith kind of kicked it, seventy two percent. I am surprised. This is I am definitely too. a I thought surprise slivers, by me. Yeah, I thought slivers were gonna make a better run than that. Uh, but yeah, so Dranith pulls out. But that what Dranith does is it shuts down your commander. Yeah, and anything else that isn't from your hand, it shuts down everybody's commanders, opponents' commanders, right? So yeah, opponents. Yeah, that, that's You're understandable. Fine, um, who do you think wins this round? I I think Rift will still beat. I Tranith think this one's Magistrate. a little bit. This one's unlike the other two. I think this one is gonna e- more easily. Yeah. Rift I think it's a seventy games. thirty matchup. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Getting the seventies. Yeah. All right, and then what is the next round we have here? Or next? Uh, the matchup? Planeswalker Karn that shuts down artifacts versus Hakori, something or other. I don't. Uh, but. This, yeah, the Dest dude. Yeah, this was very close. Yeah, it was very close. 56% for Karn. Um, and I think that is... It tells you how much Collector Oaf had. You know, like yeah. people just hate that artifact shutdown. So Karn has... And this is one side. So Karn yeah. only hits opponents. So this is even more... It, it, the Hakori dude shuts down. He makes it so your lands don't untap yeah. besides what is it one or two a turn or something like that. Yeah. But the shut down everybody else's artifacts. It's kind of crazy, but I don't think it has a chance. What the matchup is on the next one. No, it doesn't. Uh, so <laughs> it's going to be uh, the lower seed is a choir and it did not get a single vote <laughs> against <Yeah>. whole breacher. <laughs> oh, this is our, only a hundred percent vote, yeah, kind of in a way. Whole breacher uh, at a hundred percent against Karn. You, you see that, and you're just kind of like, that has a really good chance to go the whole way. Even the person chance. that suggested us to put acquire on the list did not vote for acquire. Yes, they were like, oh, that's not a good. No, I hate whole breacher. <laughs> That was yeah. Hall Breacher is the worst. Yep. Like this is a card I think I have going to the finals when I did my did bracket because yeah. 
Yeah. And it was before it was at a hundred. Well, I mean, it was at a hundred percent when I did my bracket, <laughs> yeah. but it was before that this was all done. But yeah, I was like, ew, Hall Breacher is a pretty damn good card. Uh, so yeah, I think Hall Breacher kind of kills it in this yeah. one, even against Karn. Yep. Um, all right. So then my number two pick. So the, the bottom part of the bracket. So the number yep. two pick was Stasis going against Living End. And that was a, a big butt whoop in there as well. Yep. Stasis won at 96%. Uh, and then the next matchup was Blightsteel Colossus against Void Winnower. This one was a little closer. I was but, very uh, surprised by this. Yeah, Void Winnower ended up winning 64% of the vote. So the even stuff mattered in this, and people didn't care about uh, the infect as much. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but it was still kind of close. 64 is still pretty decently close. Stasis, in my opinion, is going to kill Void Winnower yes. at this point. I totally agree. Yeah. It's gonna. It's not going to be pretty. Yep. Uh, all right, and then the next one. <sighs> Dude, I was actually surprised how close this one was. Uh, so Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, against Mana Drain and uh, Crater Hook Behemoth won at 60%. And I think it's because Mana Drain just was so expensive up until Commander Legends, really. Commander Legends, you yeah. Know. Uh, you know, after Iconic. I didn't own a copy but, until Commander Legends. So. <laughs> yes. And so I think it's out there a lot more, but Crater Hook Behemoth, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. there's Smothering Tithe versus Calamax, and everybody made the correct decision to vote what? for Manix or Smothering Tithe. <laughs> Calamax isn't salty at all. It's not a problem. <laughs> Everybody loves that card. I think it should Commander. be banned, you especially when Lowry down. plays it. <laughs> Smothering Tithe is much more annoying and salty. Creating. Uh, uh, so uh, that one, 79%. Okay, so we have Tithe against Crater Hoof. Yeah. Ooh, this one's kind of tough. I think it's close. I think it's a battle of not super salty cards, in my opinion. Like Lukewarm. And either one of these is going to get destroyed by stasis, like in the next yeah, round. Yeah, a good point. A good point. Um, uh, I think tithe would make it for me. Yeah, probably me but as I, well. I can see people voting crater hoof because it is always a game, kind of the same lines as um, triumph for the hordes. You know, it's it's green's way of winning yeah. a lot of times. Yep. More often than not, it's crater hoof that you see that more than anything because it's easily searchable and really does the game winning stuff but salty wise i think tithe is being played quite a bit Mm -hmm. you know it's an every white deck yeah uh all right so then the next matchup uh was vorinclex against arena of the ancients vorinclex crushed at 89 percent yeah and then you had omni science against seedborn muse yes i said omni science and OmniScience won 68% of the votes, and it's probably not getting any further because it's going against Vorin Clex. Vorin Clex a has a real shot. There's a, a lot of hate going against Vorin Clex, yep. so I don't I don't think that one's getting anywhere after that. And then the last matchup of the this it's gonna Salty be 64. Narset, Part of the Veil, versus in, Imprisoned in the Moon. Oh, no contest. Narset wins at 88%. And Sweet. the Bottom one is well, it's kind of a weird one. <laughs> Armageddon versus Insurrection. If you don't this feel one, like you voted on this, it's because you didn't. <laughs> you didn't, <laughs> unless you're in the Discord. We threw it out. We 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 missed. This one was it on. just a special Discord voting yeah. only. No, <laughs> there was 32 of these, and Mr. Adam, yes, I'm talking in third person. That's all right. Was fucking tired. We don't need to blame in you. Florida. You did a great job. I think those thumbnails look and fantastic. I made a thumbnail for it. I just never posted it. Yeah. <laughs> so that never made it out. But the Discord voted. And where did they vote, Larry? They voted 100% in favor of hating Armageddon. Yeah. So Armageddon moves on. Uh, Armageddon against Narset? Ooh. <sighs> Ooh. That's a good matchup. I I hope Armageddon makes it. But I've I've I seen Narset. I haven't had Armageddon played against me. Uh, well, Trombley has it in his Kalia deck. Oh, his his Kalia yeah. deck. He did do But he just kind of ends time. the game pretty quickly that was, yeah. after that. So it's like yeah. is it salty? Yeah, after the third time it happens in a day, like yeah, that sucks. But yeah, Narset I can see wheel Armageddon sucks. 
Yeah, anything that deals with not being able to draw more sucks a lot. I'm going to say I, Narset. This one's going to be close. I'm going to say Narset. Yeah, I, I might be there with you. I, I, I don't like Narset. But Armageddon might have like that old cachet that's like, But again, I the hate. old stuff. Some people don't even have never even had it played against yeah. them because it's an older card and people don't see it But that's it that why often. I'm like, so it could Stasis, be the bribery thing. Stasis is yeah. an old school cachet card where people are like, yes, I hate that card, obviously. <laughs> I've never seen it played, yeah. but I hate I it. I hate it. I know that I, <laughs> I hate it. I don't it. want to see anything about it. <laughs> but it goes, you know, if you're not planning with it, it can go away. Like if you're playing fair with it, yeah. Stasis just like slows the game down for a couple turns and then it's over. But everybody yeah. abuses it, just like they abuse Narset and Hullbreacher. And that's why we hate these fucking cards. Because you yeah. abuse what's going <laughs> Salty on. Salty ass card. Yeah. Dude, these matchups are awesome. Like yeah. this, I'm excited to do the voting on this one. So, um, like I said before, we're going to put these out. You check yeah. out hashtag vote Salty 32 to find them. Or you just go, like Larry said before, go to our Twitter page and follow us so that you can actually see this, but then you can go down and the voting will be there as well. But if you just want to search it and find all of them, uh, they'll all go up pretty much at the same time. Now that we're, we're narrowing this list down. And again, if you want to win some prizes, hashtag MTG salty 64 with your pick this week. So if you picked last week, do it again, because yes. you also get another entry. If you're, you're the right, if you choose the right card to make it to the, the top spot. Um, all right. So, that was Salty 64. I don't need to play that thing again. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to get into... Who am I? Your commander. 99 pounds, but a bitch ain't one. You're garbage! You sick old woman! Muff garbage! Muff garbage! There we go. Yeah. We got long intros. I like it. <laughs> and they like pump you up because yeah, X-Men does. theme just always, you just want to have that on the background. With, I mean, uh, and just like right. cultural icons in the mm. Jay-Z, Game of Thrones, South Park. Yeah, exactly. Like, those are pillars right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So if you don't know how this works, we are going to go through all the legendary creatures. So basically the ones that can be commanders. There is also a planeswalker mixed in here because technically it can be your commander. Oh my goodness. I don't Normally know if that's we don't. on the list. Maybe. I don't oh, know. It should be. I just did legendary creature. If we get to that one and you're not there, I'll just say okay. that one. But we're going to go through and we're going to decide if we think it's commander material, 99 material, or just muff garbage. And that's pretty much it, guys. Yeah. So uh the first one i'll go over because larry's gonna have fun with the next one but uh is it ave okay ave Ave. <laughs> i like wrote ave. it down ave uh, i wrote it down like so i'm like enunciating it right and then i look at it and it's avenue and i'm like no it's ave <laughs> <laughs> uh progenitor ooze so this is three green two colorless and it is a two two legendary creature ooze it has storm when or Ave progenit, uh, Progenitor Ooze isn't legendary if it's a token. Mm -hmm. When it enters the battlefield, it enters with a 1 1 counter it for each other ooze you control. So if you've cast a bunch of stuff and then you cast this, you make a bunch of tokens of this. Yeah. Basically. And then they it's all have commander. different 1 1 counters on it because Storm, Ooh. like. Oh, yeah, because it goes in order of. Resolves. Like the last storm counter would resolve before uh, the actual card resolves. So the actual card would be the biggest version of it. Yeah. But um, why make this legendary? I don't know. Like, why even add in that rule? Because it's. So just so they can have the text underneath that's saying that the, the tokens, the tokens aren't, aren't legendary? So, oh, um, hold on, hold on. This could be kind of cool, too, if it's in, like, a green-blue deck and you have, like, a blue token copy that you can create that would also, like, copy this. Do you know what I mean? So, this not being your commander. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you probably, I don't know. So, do I want this as my commander? <laughs> It's an ooze commander, I guess. Yeah. Because it works with, it gets a 1-1 one, one counter for each other ooze. Yeah. But is it really, I mean, 
I almost put this in the garbage. It is a commander. Like it's for yes. the ooze. I, I agree. But do we have enough ooze stuff out Can there? Can be a mono really... green storm deck. This is like the oh. second green storm card. That's any good? If it's I'm good, more, I'm I'm leaning towards. I have garbage. no interest in building this. How about we say that? I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, next one, Larry. Go for it. <clears throat> <clears throat> As Moran Mardika Dasticuladar Car. <laughs> Did you, you were the one? Didn't you say it on on uh, Discord? You're like, I feel like there's a lot of dicks in there. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's definitely a lot of dicks in there. Yeah, I did. As more I heard you say a couple of dicks. More, <laughs> more dick uh, dice tin <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> this is stupid. Now, uh, number two is probably pissed at us right now because he did send a one to pronounce it, and you just I just we didn't, didn't get it cut up. Maybe if we ever we didn't talk get it about cut up, and we thought again, it'd be funnier for us to to read it. Fucking but. butcher it. All right. So this. <laughs> All right. Is, what's the card do? Uh, it has no mana cost because if there what? was a mana cost in it, they couldn't fit the full name in it. Yeah. That, that, and apparently, that is this character is in flavor text way back when. So like, you can't mm-hmm. change his name because it's a known character. Um. As long as you... It's a human wizard. All right. As long as you've discarded a card this turn, you may pay a red or green, so a Rakdos, to cast this spell. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Um, so you can pay... If you've discarded a card, you can pay one for a 3-3. Three, three. When, as Moran okay, so Nomar <laughs> de Cadiz Tinacula de Car... That car. <laughs> a dick car. When it enters the battlefield, <laughs> you may search your library for a card named the Underworld Cookbook, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle, then sacrifice two food. Target Ugh. creature deals six. Oh, target creature deals six damage to itself. Ugh. All right. The, the Underworld Cookbook, really quick, is a one drop artifact, uh, or it costs one to come out. You tap it, discard a card, create a food token. Fucking greatest token in the world. Uh, then you tap four and tap it, sacrifice the cookbook, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's just a garbage card. Like, I'm sorry, but muff garbage. the whole thing to me is just muff garbage. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work. I agree. Um, There's no way this is your commander. <sighs> I mean, I, again, I don't love it as a commander. Why is this a $30 card? Maybe. Because of the name. It's the flavor crap. And people it's the flavor go, crap. So, I mean, yeah, six damage. If you can. So, if Kroxa you can... is a deck that this could maybe fit in. And I don't think I'd put it in my Kroxa deck. You know? Yeah, because you don't have any food synergy with it. Well, yeah, but it's talking about discarding. Because that deck is made. Do you discard main ideas. though? Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of me discarding as well. Okay. Not as often as yeah. everybody else, but I do everybody discard, blah, blah, blah. Um, in a discard deck? I just, I think we move on from it, but I think it's, I think it's muff garbage. Where do you, where do you? I'm okay with that. Muff garbage. Like putting, okay. putting it in the 99 probably isn't worth it. Um, I don't want to build with it. And my All right. Uh, next one is Captain Ripley Vance. This is an uncommon. Uh, it's a red and two colorless. Uh, legendary creature, human pirate. Whenever you cast your third spell each turn, put a one on counter on Captain Ripley. Then it deals damage equal to its power to any target. There's a lot of spells to cast in a Three's turn. Three is a lot. But you're at least doing four damage the first time. And then it goes up from there. Yeah. Is that good? My garbage! Three spells is a lot. And if if and that's your come commander, and you're a mono red casting three spells in a turn. You're having to refill your hand. I mean, yeah. I think you, you got to get enough. And what is it? Is it? It's not. Is it rummaging? Is what red? What you call when you're or it's 
looting whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's You're getting looting rid and of rummaging. Stuff and yeah. Drawing more, maybe getting a bonus of one card, but three spells? Maybe if this had two. Two. Two two'd be not enough. You could do two yeah. pretty consistently. But three is so a lot. So it'd be like, half. yeah, two and a half. <laughs> Ugh. You'd have to think about casting that third spell, and then it would count or tap the land for. Yeah, it I'm I'm down with muff garbage casting. again. Right. Are we we're just being wow. fucking ruthless. What's <laughs> going on? But but this next one's pretty sweet. Is it? So get onto that one. Karth the Lion. Uh, two colorless, green, black, three five human warrior, legendary creature. Whenever Karth the Lion enters the battlefield, or a planeswalker you control dies. Whenever Karth ETBs or a Planeswalker yep. you control dies, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a Planeswalker card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom, random order. Planeswalker loyalties, abilities you activate cost an additional plus one to activate. That's fucking awesome. So so what's okay, that really saying quick. is... Is this the first time that we hear planeswalkers being referred to as dying? Isn't that kind of interesting? I don't. I can't I, think of things. There probably might be, but I don't remember saying hearing it saying that they die. Yeah, you know? I don't know. It's kind of almost like a referring to them as like a creature kind of type thing. Yeah, but that's beside the point with it. But the the plus one. Think of that with like the War of the Spark planeswalkers that only are minuses. This is now plusing. So you can use their ability depending if it's like well, a zero so, or whatever. Yeah, so if it's if it's a, a minus two, you just minus you, one. Minus it. one. If it's right. zero, it's a plus one. And if it's a yeah. minus zero, it's a zero. Or a minus one, it's a zero. Plus plus the fact of, of this is like it comes into play, you're looking at seven cards. Mm-hmm. Taking a planeswalker, putting it in your hand. One of your other planeswalkers dies, seven cards again. Mm-hmm. You know, it this this seems pretty sweet. I, I I almost want this in a 99 Atraxa type build That's where you're building thinking. with Planeswalkers yeah. more than a commander because then you're only focused on two colors. This had a couple more colors in it, then it'd be a little bit more like fun. This, but I think this could 99. really be cool. Like That's Garrick. That's Liliana. That's uh, Vraska colors. Mm-hmm. Like There's plenty of those Planeswalkers. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it could be commander, yeah. but I think you see this probably more in the ninety nine in other I th- it, super like, friends decks. How many yeah, yeah. It's a super friends card, as long as it's green and mm-hmm. black. Totally agree. Yep. Ninety nine All right. So let's see. Here we go. There's so so there's so much scrolling because each card has Four, five different five. versions yeah. of it. It's, Chainer, it, Chainer it's, has a reprint, but yeah. the next. Uh, so then the next one I'm probably going to build. It's beautiful. Because I didn't build one on the last set, and I was actually going to build that other food commander. Yeah, me food commander. Mm. But uh, Chatterfang Squirrel General. I finally got to the, I know you guys have already heard about this and I've specced on it. Everybody knows about it, but now we're going through and deciding if it's a commander 99 or whatever Weird. Two green. And it's a squirrel wrangler. Is that what it is? Warrior. Warrior. <laughs> Warrior. All right. So it has forest walk and it is a three, three. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one squirrel creature tokens are created instead. You can tap one, sacrifice X squirrels, target creature gets plus X, minus X until end of turn. So it can kill an Emmer cool if you have enough squirrels out there. And it's only one. You're just sacrificing as many as you want, which is really cool. It's not like you have to tap that many. It's just the one black. Uh, the thing I want to do with this is build it with like other tokens. So yeah. not necessarily more make squirrels. it squirrel based, but it's more of like, hey, I'm gonna make treasure tokens here. I'm gonna clue make clue tokens or clue, not food. I won't beast make... <laughs> tokens. Or... Anytime you Elf just tokens. Think, I, I, I kind of want to build a different kind of deck than just squirrels going on squirrels. squirrel tribal. Yeah. Well, so... but either way, this card is bonkers. Think yeah. I I was looking at this a little bit like a, it's a uh, parallel lives, but for three mana, and and then mm. it, you don't get the double those tokens, but you get to 
double the amount of tokens that you're getting. Right. Right. Um, and it doesn't matter what, what tokens you're being made. It just, yeah. Get, just think of you make your tokens and then you get these bonus little squirrels on the other Avenger side. Avenger of Zendikar for seven plus seven, you know, seven plants, seven squirrels. Jesus. Yeah. Tap one, kill off a creature. Yeah. <laughs> like, or buff your creature enough that doesn't die and kill somebody else. You know, it's instant speed stuff. So you could do some cards. Cool. Mighty damage with cards. This. Cool. So for yeah, sure. this, yeah, it, it's going to be a fun one. So obviously commander, commander. and 99 commander. Like, okay. I, I would just yeah, put this a into a green black token deck, right? Yeah. Why yeah. not? All right. The uh, oh, dude, I love this one too. I don't know. I get I, this one. I can't wait. Yes, you get this one because I got this. I got Karth earlier, one. and now I'm going to talk about Garth, the one-eyed. Oh. <laughs> uh, it is Wooberg, so white, blue, black, red, green, human wizard, five-five, legendary creature. You can tap it. <clears throat> Choose a card name that hasn't been chosen from among uh, from among these names. Disenchant, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. What? Create a copy Black of the Lotus. card with the chosen name. You may cast the copy. So... I haven't seen it yet. So disenchant. So you tap. They gotta give us token cards. With I don't this. think they so are. You're gonna get. A, I don't think they are. So that's why I'm really excited. I'm fucking making a black lotus proxy. Uh, I thought you were gonna spec that on black is lotus. Coming. That's <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Uh, I know other uh, uh, fast finance. They spec on like terror, like the top ends of terrors and shivan dragons and all that. But no, I'm really excited to make a black lotus. a proxy of Black Lotus yeah, because cool. it's it's never been a part of this. Like, fuck, it's not even legal in Magic. Not even, in, it's not real. Commander. Yeah. So now I'm gonna make one that doesn't really even have a casting cost because it's that that won't be part of it because it's a token copy. So I, I think this card's really fucking cool. Like, it's a little nostalgic with the stuff that it has in there. They're not all that good. At some of that stuff. Well, no, they're all. R- Old school playable, right? Disenchant. But that's what's cool. Is like, terror. Does this not go in every five color deck? Like it doesn't need to be the commander. I think this is better as a ninety nine as your utility card because it has utility built in on a stick. Yeah, you get either Monorox with your Black Lotus, you get your Recursion with your Regrowth, you get a creature that's big, you get a uh, Destroy a creature with Terror. You get Brain Geyser, which is drawing, and you get Disenchant, which is destroy a uh, artifact mm-hmm. or enchantment. Or no, is it just enchantment? Oh, it's What's, artifact and enchantment. Yeah, right? artifact and enchantment. What does Brain Geyser do? Isn't that one uh, drawing the drawing cards? One? Yeah, that's probably right. Let's make sure before we make that. I make that claim and then be really wrong. Brain Geyser. Is it blue, blue, colorless. I believe that's what it is. Blue, blue, colorless. Target player must draw X or cards. X. Yeah. So blue, blue it, X. It fits. Yeah every part of basically the game, except you don't have like protection on there or something like that. Yeah. But just by tapping it, you get to do one of those, what? One, two, three, four, five, six things. And if you're able to blink it and make it come back into play, you can do it all over yes. again. Yep. That is a thing. You do have to cast. Right. These it's, cards. But still. that's what I'm saying. Well, no, 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 no. You just, you put that into play. Create a copy of uh, of the card with the chosen and, name. But in the parentheses, oh, you, you may, may you still pay card. its costs. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. Shit. Okay, so that's bringing it down a little bit. My excited level is coming down. <laughs> well, I mean, just like that'd be really cool, just to like tap it and like Shiv and Dragon. Yeah, that's you know what, what I, I thought I was heavy doing. Heavy badass. Until I didn't keep reading. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or listen to you read. I, just I didn't heard say that Black part because it's. In, I, no, yeah, I, always I went, that. Black Lotus. <laughs> so, so but, this are you putting this into, like everything seems reasonable. Like the disenchant, terror, regrowth, and Black Lotus, are all reasonable. Shivan Dragon is probably one that doesn't get cast that. And often, Brain guys are just like if you're if you need more cards that works. Right. But. 
that's still solid utility. Yeah. No, that's that's what I was saying. Five color decks. Use this. Think of it, it slivers. I mean, you could use this in slivers. You could use this in. It's a little tougher in slivers because slivers all go off each other. But any other five color deck, don't you think this goes in there as it's a utility card built in on a stick? Yeah, it definitely it, can be a utility up, card. I'm not going to disagree with you. Let's on say that. there's six options there. You're really only using five of the utility. The Shivan Dragon's kind of like a bonus, whatever. You're probably not going to use that one. You're going to use the other. Well, it's five it's a nice you know? game, you know, game ender per se. You know, like it's mm. nobody uses it anymore. But if it comes attached to fucking Black Lotus, like you know what I mean, <laughs> I get a Black Lotus, and then the next turn I can pay three and use the Lotus and get a Shiva get a Dragon. Shiver. Like, sure, yeah. I'm down. Yeah. No, so I I more put this in the 99. But I don't know if I'd want this as my commander. I think I'm more of a 90. 99. Make a copy of the card with the chosen name. So it's not like making a token. It's a copy of the card. Right? Yeah. So like it doesn't work with like Chatterfang. Yeah. Cuz like that'd be cool. Um but like there isn't really any way to double this like maybe strionic resonator like where you you tap this well, you choose and then well, you're copying you, it what you could do your fork abilities type stuff because then you're casting the spell and double it do i want to, to use fork on a disenchant <laughs> maybe no. you never no, know i do not <laughs> <laughs> I think you should change change your Calamax deck to this one because I don't even I don't have know. doublers in Calamax. I don't, I don't. You guys are so salty about that. Uh, <laughs> so I put ninety nine though. Are you putting it ninety nine? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I I can be convinced either way. Commander ninety nine. Or would you want this as it, your commander? You. I think it'd be fun. Like, what else is in the deck? What do you mean? If you, if it's your commander, uh, like blink it so you could reuse it. Uh, stuff that allows you so to you untap and tap on, on it. Blinking? Yeah, or just untapping, tapping, and using yeah. it. Um, that's just to reset it so that you can use the... Yeah. Use it multiple turns. Yeah. You have haste on it so you can do it the first turn it comes into play. I think the big problem is, is like it. you need to still oh. cast it. Helm of the Host on it. Holy That'd balls. be cool. Or there's a lot of the red stuff because I've dealt with red lately <laughs> of when it comes into play and you're making a token copy of it and then you can use it that turn so you can pick the one that you want to use. Boom, 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 boom. Ooh. What, but those okay. would stay can legendary. Be convinced. Right? It can't. But you can tap it still when it hits. Yeah. No, not not right? in between. You'd no. have to choose. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I was but, hoping. <laughs> um, there's the blue green card from Strixhaven that's like the flip card. You do the blue side, mm-hmm. all your creatures would turn into Garth. Well, and we have right. Sakashima stuff, all that fun stuff, yeah. where you yeah. take the legendary stuff away. And I think we're that. thinking too hard I mean, about this. All right, let's move. It, it seems fun. I'm excited to make. I'm, I think it's cool. I'm excited. There's a couple of tokens, or I want to make Black Lotus. That's that's like coming that's up a, here yeah. pretty yeah, soon. I, I, after I'm it done, it does with sound this. like you're coming. So yeah. <laughs> Zing. Uh, right. Gross. Uh, General Pharos Rockerick. Rockerick? Rockerick. Rockerick. Uh, one red, white, three, one legendary human soldier. Hexproof from monocolored. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a four, four red and white column artifact creature token. Um, It seems very straightforward. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, I if guess the best. this was a five color general, I'd be happier. Whenever you can, yeah. but right now For you're sure. only going like I'm going to Boros. just jam as many red, white, multicolored cards in here as I possibly can. Yeah, does this go in a Boros deck though? Like, does, does just this fit, fit into it? In... Mm. I mean, a, a I little mean... bit of a problem there is like Boros decks. Are typically like heavy into artifacts artifact or equipment yeah. stuff and this uh, doesn't 
Muff garbage. It could be a I, commander, yeah, I, but really, are you gonna are you gonna build around that? Muff garbage seems harsh. Okay. Ninety nine. No, but I, would you even put no, it as a ninety nine? So. Did you put it as a commander? I mean, it is a commander. It is. I'm just, it has protection I, from monocolor. I'd like it if we removal. had like a purgatory section too, and just kind of like maybe one day this could be interesting. I have more of a <laughs> podcast body. Close That's enough. just the button Close enough. <laughs> oh Jesus! There's a uh, lot of words on this one. <laughs> All right, so you're on the the planeswalker that is actually oh, can be your commander I don't, that doesn't okay, save. Okay, I don't have that one. So that is yours. Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> Grist, the Hunger Tide, is a Planeswalker. It's one black and a green for Planeswalker Grist. Uh, as long as Grist isn't on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 one, one insect creature in addition to its other types. So, its other types are Legendary Planeswalker Grist. So, it's a Legendary Planeswalker Grist Insect. So, it is a creature uh, with it or insect creature. Yeah. So that's why this can be your commander here. So the plus one. So this is actually going to work really well with Chatterfang, but plus one, create a one, one black and green insect creature token, then mill a card. If uh insect card was milled this way, put a one uh, loyalty counter on Gris and repeat this process. So if you're putting it in Chatterfang, that isn't going to repeat, but you're going to get two, two tokens off of it. Uh, you can minus two sacrifice a creature when you do destroy target creature or planeswalker. That's pretty sweet. So you kill one of your squirrels and destroy any creature or planeswalker that's on the battlefield. Minus five. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of cards in your graveyard. So as a commander, that seems decent. Sacrifice a creature has protection. You're getting a creature in its place. Sounds like a lot of reading. <laughs> and did I lose you, Lowry? No, I yeah. All right, but also just like <clears throat> it's a planeswalker that can be a commander, but only because it's a creature. But only it's only a creature when it's not in play. It is the weirdest. Why not it, just say this why could be your commander, that? even though it's a <laughs> yeah. modern set? But just like just say it. <laughs> Just say it. Yeah. Why Why come up with special rules? That's a good point. That is a really <laughs> good point. They did that part so that they didn't have to put that and make it so it's in a modern. Yeah. It's totally. A, yeah. It's, it's Or just <laughs> not do it. You know what I mean? And I guess also you can search yeah, for it when tutor you're going through Yeah, or a silver tutor or yeah. whatever the fuck. Like, oh, okay. So, like, am I learning a lesson about cards that aren't in play but have like special because like I've, I've had to have the discussion about like Xur the Enchanter going and getting Thassa God of the Sea and they're like no you can't because you have enough devotion it's a creature it's like but it's always an enchantment but it's and right. and a creature the only difference is it's not a creature if it's not devotion on the battlefield so is this going to be more of the same fucking discussion wait, wait, wait. so back that up you can't go and get Thassa well, with a worldly tutor. Yeah. You can you oh, can go okay. get Thassa, and or with with a worldly tutor, and and so it's everything that it says on the card everywhere other than on is the battlefield. So like, if it's on the battlefield and then you don't meet devotion, then it's not a creature. Right. That's when it does. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. That's okay, the I, was, only I thought you were where... telling me different. I was like, what the fuck? I, this is not how I've been playing but, this but at all. But the problem <laughs> is, is like, th it's going to be creating these discussions of where the fuck is this, what it is, when it is, mm. when it just isn't necessary. Yeah. And so we're, it can be, your I'm commander. going to say it's muff garbage just for the point of being a pain in my ass trying to talk about rules for it. So, <laughs> you're there. I'm more of the 99. I'm more of the 99 because yeah. I think I don't want this as my commander, but I do. I think I might. It, it'll fit in I think it's Chatterfang cool. I think pretty it's utility well. Wise, yeah, fine. Yeah, you could so, go in, right. in um, insect token tribal insect squirrel token tribal. <laughs>
<laughs> but this part I would use, because the thing is, is you're using the, the like I said, with the chatter thing is I don't want to necessarily be doing squirrel tribal. Mm -hmm. They're going to make squirrels when I'm making tokens, yeah. you yeah. know, and then this has removal built in on it. Um, so anyways, uh, all right. So the <coughs> next one, L Lonus, the cryptozoologist, cryptozoologist, kid can't even <laughs> read. Uh, green, blue, one. one, two, snake elf scout. You can hit the button if you want. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> kid can't even read. Uh, it's weird when you play it for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't do it for when you did the long I, name, missed dude. That missed opportunity. I did. All right, there's a lot of words here. <clears throat> Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate, which means create a clue token. Fucking, why would they call it? I, I never understood why they just called it investigate instead of, say, make a clue token. There's no... What do you mean? Well, investigate is a keyword yeah. to go and create a clue token, which means that you need to pay two to draw a card. Why not simplify this and just say, make a create a clue? Mm. All right. Yeah, that's not all. It taps. Well, because because yeah. create a clue. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Tap. <laughs> There's no reason for it to be a keyword, <laughs> right? Doesn't have to be a keyword. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> that's not all. It taps. Sacrifice X clues. Why didn't they just say sacrifice X tokens that you investigated for? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm being a pain in the ass all right sacrifice and exclude tokens <laughs> my wife loves me all right target opponent reveals the top x cards of their library you may put a non-land permanent card with mana value x or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control that player puts the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order What's going on? Okay. What's... Okay. So you, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you make a clue. No, it investigates. <laughs> well, but you're making a clue. Uh, that's your yeah. point. Uh, well, that's what they don't want you to say make a clue. They just want it one word, investigate, which is probably the same amount of letters involved with that. M-A-K-E-A-C-L-U-E. Create a clue. So it's nine. One, Go two, cluing. three, four, five, six, clue, clue, seven, clue. eight, nine, ten. There's eleven letters in investigate, and there's nine when you say make a clue. <laughs> they didn't make, but did you count the spaces in there? <laughs> no, then you're then you're a little more. Uh, all right, so then that that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, I like that you're, part. You're, you're, other than it has a an ETB for all your other yeah. creatures and stuff like that. I think that. that's cool. And then tap, sacrifice X clues. Give me just a second. I gotta, I'm rereading it, though. Target opponent reveals the top X cards of your library. You may put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. So you get to do one. <sighs> that player puts the rest on the bottom. Okay, well, let's let's forget that part because I feel like this is that part's kind of garbage. Because one, you're you're getting rid of your clues. How many clues are you getting rid of? That those potentially can draw you cards. Sure, you, know? you, you sure. can sacrifice tap two and sacrifice and draw a card. Where this is, you're sacrificing. Let's say four of them. You're going four deep. Let's say you hit a non-land permanent, but what if it's not four or less? <laughs> then you don't even get to. Yeah, you don't get to do anything. You don't even like get that. to yeah. do anything with it. So it's like, why would you even do that? So let's focus on the first part. That first part's kind of cool, especially for green, You're, blue, one, two. Um, for two mana to come yeah. out, if ignore that bottom part, I think it's actually pretty decent. I don't like that bottom part as whatever. Well, what what that can be? Where would the bottom part have to be used to be good. Like, would it be six, six or eight it starts being good? Like you dig eight, put a six to eight into play. You get to choose 
that starts seeing like a four, like digging four, you're probably not going to hit anything, you know? Yeah. I, I guess to me, and I kind of made this argument or whatever, when um, we have that new tireless tracker kind of card that's making treasure tokens instead of clues. And I said, personally, I like the treasures better, even though I know it's not better. I know clues are better, but I like treasures because it's, something that you can use right away without having to pay like clues i end up always having like i make clues no, I, I and think at the end of the game the better. clues are they're just super fast mana they're lotus petals you right. know what i mean they're right and so i personally like the treasures better because I, at the end of the game i always still have clues sitting on my yeah. side of the board because i didn't have the mana yeah. open because i'm trying to utilize my hand this kind of gives you that way to not necessarily get rid of them but maybe in a pinch you're like fuck okay, I have all these clues. Let's sacrifice them and see if we and, get and, something. And you know? a cool thing that I like, because Tireless Tracker is one of my favorite creatures. Yeah. But so Tireless Tracker counts if a clue has been sacrificed. So you could attack with bigger. a Tireless Tracker and they don't block it. Then you could use this, sacrifice all your clues, pump it like, you know, eight, six, yeah. eight, like we're talking about and still get another creature into play. That could be a cool move. But again, mm-hmm. I, I think this is a cool 99. And I think this yes. is a cool... It's definitely... Yeah. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Um, Wait. But I also, I also think it's a really cool commander. Like, I think it's discussion-wise. Yeah. Clues aren't amazing, but, like, if you... Again, like, they're drawing cards, but you're already in blue. Like, do you really need that in blue? Yeah. But if you're on theme, that's cool. Um... I I like oh, I, it as the commander too. I if if I yeah, was going to build something, you, you I just might play build a this. bunch of ETB. Not think you'll get double ETB with a lot of that. Panamonica stuff. You're playing ETB two stuff. Clues? Yeah. Oh. I mean, investigates twice. Blues. Stupid. Well, but you know what I'm saying. Like a lot of that stuff, I always do. Like uh, the land of war. Not the land of war. The the elves when you go search for land, you get uh, an ETB from that, and then you'll get a. Yeah. You get an ETB from this, you know, so you don't even necessarily have to have that because if this is your commander, you have ETB built in on a stick that dr- draws you stuff. So I, I think this could be a very fun commander and a very good 99, like you're saying. So I think both ways in this one. So it is definitely a 99, yeah, Come on. a 99 commander. I think it's an awesome. I'm down. After we figured it out, <laughs> I, I feel like that top part I'm going to use more and the bottom part I'd use more yeah. in a pinch. All right, so the next one, after 20 minutes of talking about that, uh, Peru? Peru? P- Peru's a country. Per- and Yeah, I know. <laughs> Peru? Peru, the volatile? Peru? The volatile. So we have our next elder dragon that goes with the original OG ways of the elder dragons. Yeah. So this is two, two red, two white, two black. Elder Dragon, 7-7 seven, seven legendary creature. Obviously, Flying Lifelink. At the beginning of your upkeep, so this is why it's this similar as the original uh, OG yeah. Elder Dragons, is you have to pay a red, white, and a black. To keep Otherwise, it you have to sacrifice it. Uh, when it dies, though, it deals 7 damage to each non-legendary creature. So that's kind of interesting because it's built into, hey, I'm not going to pay this 3. Kill everything that isn't legendary. Whoa, hold on. So do you get to gain that much life? Yes, because it has life on it. Because it deals that as well. So you yeah. hit everything and you gain a shit ton that's, of life. That's dope. Yeah. So this this seems like it could be definitely a commander. Yeah. You build it around. Would you put this in Kalia? Maybe making a. like potential to gain a ton of life getting rid of a lot of creatures you're playing a lot of legendary creatures but think of this what if it's in like a token focus deck where you just you're gonna gain a ton of life a shit ton of life you have a bunch of shit out there you're also wiping everybody else's board on board and then just drain everybody or somebody that uh, much uh, 